Father, we believe and receive wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. We are edified and your name is glorified. And that power working mightily in me today. In Jesus' mighty name and the saints say, Amen. Praise the Lord. We are on a teaching that we have actually titled the servants of righteousness. Right? And we are going to, and last week, I only shared one point with you. This week, I'm sharing one point too, right? I think it's going to make it easy for us. But um, I want to, um, you know, my assistant pastors did something there. I want to follow in the spirit of prophecy. So, like, that's the way I teach. Where someone stops is where you start. Look at Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Very important truth that she has shown us that you must better tropocactus. Level practice, teach to practice. Jete clita talo hias. There is peace in the midst of storms. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6. Look at what she said to us from, we're going to be looking at verse 14. I'll start off from verse 13. It says, wherefore. Okay, verse 12 is also good. It says, for we wrestle not against I want you to write that down if that is your Bible or mark it somewhere. Sister, you know, it's important that Fola knows that victory is not a problem. Praise God. Church, praise God. You know, it's important that Precious knows very, very clearly. Very clearly that Temi is not a problem. Because there's a tendency to think that your issues are human beings. The moment you miss it, that your issues are human beings. So your issue is not your in-law, your brother, your boss at work. It's just the, well, how they want you to see it. So the Bible is helping you with knowledge. That's what sometimes they say, I will never forgive him. You think he's your problem. That's, you see, if you understood this, you'll be a little more lenient with human beings. You know, we don't actually believe that there is a spirit of disobedience that drives men to do evil things. Amen? You know you're born again. You know it is weird to you to take up a, a knife and stab somebody. But there is somebody that has done that. You know that is not, there, there is something that drives men. You know you're having a good day at work. You know there is something, take it for how it is. I'm not saying you should go to work and start snooping around if there's a demon at work. But I'm saying, you know, it just looks like maybe your boss is not happy. That you are happy and just gives you more work it's not your boss and just makes life difficult for you he might have he might have a hard boss uh, you know there is a word i'm supposed to give you somebody you have a hard boss god give me a new job the lord said i tell you stay there and learn endurance praise god <laughs> amen 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 Amen. It, now, that, that's a specific word for them. Learn, learn. There are things to learn. It's not every day you just rise up and just move. Say, why? Because of your boss. Amen. It's a specific word for So don't go and make it a general word. As I said, if you are going through it, I'll come back tomorrow and say, there's somebody here. That's how specific words are. It's not for everybody. It's for the person. I can come back tomorrow and say, there's somebody here. Your boss is troubling you. That person. The demon will not leave soon. Go. Uh -huh. So just so that we are clear how this thing operates. Praise God. Hallelujah. But the person I'm talking to knows themselves. They just stay there and and grow, steady and grow. Praise God. Yeah. And you know, you know, like, you know, a lot of people like the word of knowledge that, have, that talks about career progression. Mm -hmm. This month, you have, you have double promotion. Say, amen. There's a place for that. But this one, this says endurance. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 6. Look at verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. This is revelation. What is the issue with you? You are born again. So who are the people that are disturbing you? There is no one human being that is your issue. Amen. He says, but the, the, the issue is with principalities. Are you there? Ephesians 12, 6 verse 12. Principalities, what else is there? Powers against what? Rulers of the darkness. Where? Where? Of this world. Against what did he describe them as? Spiritual wickedness in high. Praise God. What is the response of the believer? Wherefore, take on to you the O armor of God that you may be able to. 
are you hearing the word? You, know, you see how the word of knowledge makes sense for that person? Endure. It says, take up the whole armor of God. That you'll be able to withstand. Are you hearing it? Withstand what? In the evil day. Haven't done all. What does he say you should do? Stand. Stand therefore having your lungs get about with. How do you stand? We stand with truth. Look at where, where we are going to because remember the teaching is servants of righteousness. He now says, having what? The breastplate of what is righteousness called in this particular place? Now, Paul is trying to be what? Figurative. He's speaking to people that know about war. How many people have seen or know what a breastplate is or what it looks like? Where would you follow the word breastplate? Where would you find breastplate? I hope you will not say knee. Amen. Praise God. Breastplate. So it will be with the chest. Follow, follow Paul's rendering. Why did he use those words? Breastplate. What is that breastplate to cover? The heart. Amen. Amen. Why? Because the heart is the battleground of the saints. That's where thoughts go into. When he says the fiery darts of the enemy, hope you are not looking at it as some physical arrow. Some say the true arrow in your sleep. Stay sleeping and throw it back. You know, don't make, don't make the devil important. Someone said, I dreamt that something, 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 something happened. And because of something, 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 something happened. Is the devil, was, the moment the devil is the episode in the dream, just sleep back. To, to believe a dream that is inspired by the devil is the way to make the dream powerful. Amen. 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 Because you need to understand where you are seated. Because if you don't understand where you are seated, you think that why are we? Imagine me having a, having a sleepless night over a two-year-old child coming my way. That's how the devil is. In fact, Isaiah prophesied and said, when all things have become new and we see the devil for who he is, people will wonder and say, what? Is this the guy that caused the troubles? Is this the little non-entity that caused divorces? Is that, is, uh, they, will, they will be shocked. Why? He's defeated. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. All is God. Deceptions. Yeah. He will make you logically think, tell me your problem. You know, I'm keeping malice. You think you have done something. No. You will hear later why he wants you to keep malice. You will hear we're in this same teaching. Praise the Lord. Amen. Should praise the Lord. All right, let's let, let's actually get it. so. Righteousness is this, is defined as a breastplate by Paul. What is it? Though is, is what is righteousness? The, because how do you know you are righteous? We hear it in the word anyway, right? So the word tells us that we are righteous. So when he says the breastplate of righteousness, keep the truth about your righteousness in your heart. Praise the Lord. Why that way the devil is not going to be able to actually defeat you. See. The way, where the devil defeats human beings is their hearts. Amen. Amen. Church, amen. 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 Let, let me tell you something so that I can help you. If you are having dreams of all manner of things, take your position. Just say, you know what, I'm a new creation. This should not happen again. Last morning, never do it again. Don't come and invade my dream and just be disturbing me. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. So we see, so let us start off on this teaching. The first thing that we have learned in the last five weeks is the fact that we are righteous. Let's declare, I am righteous. I am righteous. How does a man become righteous? Is it by what he does or by what Christ has done? I want you to be sure, so that I can move on, you can have to tell me, by what Christ has. So righteousness is a gift. Romans 5, 17. Someone say, a gift. Righteousness. What people call right standing. What people will call, what I will call as Jesus is. Romans 5, 17. We have said that righteousness is a gift. We want to see it for those who are writing. Romans 5, 17. For if by one man's offense. Someone say, one man's offense. How did death come into the world? One man's offense brought in death. 
was having good dialogues this weekend. Someone was asking me, so was there a world without death? Yeah. Who brought in death? Very clear. Praise God. By one man's offense, death reigned by one. Much more. They which receive the abundance of grace. What is the abundance of grace? And the gift of So abundance of grace is the gift of righteousness. So righteousness is a gift. For the lame man, E.W. Kenyon defined it in a way that a lame man can understand it. No sense of inferiority before God, before man, and before the devil. Is that simple for you? No sense of inferiority. Because what? Man has a sense of inferiority towards God. Does that make sense? Because of condemnation. How many people before now you have felt at some point in time you're not good enough? You have not prayed enough. So that you have not done something enough so that God will accept you. See, when we talk about righteousness, we're talking about the acceptance of God. And I always tell people to help you understand righteousness, always remember the fatherhood of God. Write it down. To help, always remember the fatherhood of God. Why? If only you remember that God is a father, you will not be quick to think God operates the way you think he operates. You know, people will think, say something like, God will never talk to me. God is so mad at me. He, he, imagine, imagine someone thinking this way. Isaac does something. Tosin is upset. He says, that's it. Your school fee is gone. Holiday, gone. This one, gone. That one, gone. Food at home in the morning, you will start for eight years to learn the lesson that you should not go and be playing with Makaya on the, street, on the road. You no, know, it doesn't. See, and that is why sometimes we always think that Man is better than God. And that's why we must always remember. That is why in prayer, what is the first thing Jesus will tell you about having a successful prayer life? Our killer. Our angry bird. Our father. That is what Paul too was saying when he says, we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. You know, someone wants to talk to God, you should be happy. Who is afraid? What is that? The fiery darts of the enemy. He's afraid. He thinks, no, God will leave him now. God will not hear him. Because there is a mindset religion paints to man that God is a temperamental bulldog. They paint it to man that God is moody. If you have experienced moody leaders, experienced moody explanations of how God is, how will you think God is moody? What will end up being your lot? You'll be moody. You would explain a way because man takes his mentor from who he worships. How will I know that you are getting a proper picture of God? I watch your character. Because man takes his, 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 the way he lives from who he worships. Amen. So your character is, your, is the voice of your truth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because, see, that's why we call it worship. Hallelujah. It's worship. So, the things that I do is a reflection of who I worship. All right, I've deviated again. Righteousness is a gift. Say righteousness is a gift. The number two thing we need to understand is that righteousness is everlasting. This one is important. This is breaking Bible territory ground. This is a ground that they can stone you if you say it. Amen. You know, one of us, and I shared it this week with all of us, one of us came, and please, one of us came around and was telling me that, Pastor, I've gotten confused. Someone said that righteousness is not everlasting. And he gave some scriptures. And it looks like it. Write this down. In Bible study, write it down. I've said it many times, but write it down. In Bible study, Read the Bible in context. See, if you don't read the Bible in context, I can as well say that, um, you know what, Stella is the Messiah. Because there must be a place there that has Stella. And there must be a place there that has Messiah. I just need to pick it. Like a reckless DJ. It will say it. Praise God. You know, people, people don't believe in reading the Bible in context until we say victory. The Bible says, if your hands 
causes you to sin. What should you do? Ah, no, 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 no. He, he has to be figurative. He's expecting us to cut our hand. And I said, no, 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 we have not finished. If your eye causes you to sin, what do you do? You, you, then you will now see believers say, no, no, the Bible is, is figurative. Yeah, because it is. You must patiently read in context. And so, for example, the person used the, the scripture, work out your salvation. And that's why, please, learn not, don't read, speed read the Bible like Josh the reader. Do you know Josh the reader? Don't, don't, don't read your Bible like this. No, don't. Read your Bible patiently. Patiently. Look, look, at, look, at, look at the scriptures here. It's very important. I'm saying many things, but it's very important. Look at Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Verse 12. It says, Wherefore, my beloved. Philippians 2, 12. Are you there now? It says, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but also much more in my, as, uh, my uh, uh, absence. What should you do? Walk out, what? Your own salvation with trembling. It says, did it, you know it says, walk out, not walk for. Did you notice it there? Walk out. So there's a difference between walk out and walk for. We don't walk for our salvation. Say we are already saved. We walk out our salvation. How do we walk out our salvation? Bro, sis, don't be too in a hurry. It's in the next verse. What is it? Don't just, don't just close the Bible. Ha! I've gotten it. That's where all the good are drunk with Roma. They, they always cause trouble. He said I should walk it out. Then you will not wait and hear how you should walk it out. And you just say, walking it out means... You say, it just came to me. Don't let it come to you. Stay there. Stay there. Amen. Because grace and peace is multiplied to you through the knowledge epignosis accurate precise knowledge of god it's accurate it's precise amen amen that comes from observation and study let me add that to it so i have epignosis of my wife i do from observation and study i could tell you where she wants to go to on holiday i could tell you and it's not a spiritual gift it's what? Study and observation. Let me crack a joke. I can miss it too. Because part of knowing her is knowing that she can change her mind. <laughs> Amen. That's also ep epignosis. What, what, what she wants to eat now, I can tell you. But it can change in two minutes. It's still part of what? Epignosis. We have, you are, we have had, why? Let me get, so you get it. We have had a time where we say, we are going on a dinner date. We are about to go. I don't feel like going again. You know it didn't happen to you. It happened to me. So that's epignosis. I know. Praise God. So I can say, you know what? We are going for this dinner, but it can change. Amen. Praise God. That's epignosis. So, so now look at it. It says here in Philippians 2, look at verse 13. How do you work for your salvation? Verse 13. Can we all read together as a church? Ephesians 2, 13. For it is. For it is. For it is. What does God do which? Work at where? In you. Both to will and to of his good. Who works in you? So what is that scripture saying? Now that you are saved, allow the, how does God work in you? Allow the word and the spirit work. Mean, meaning follow instructions. Meaning what? That's all that scripture is saying. But if you read it out of its verse, what will it say? It will make it look like, you know what? God is Say, if you don't work for your salvation, you don't have it. And the other scripture that the person used, you also went to Galatians 5. And I've shared with you that Galatians 5, verse 22. Let's just look at it. Because it's very important. Look at Galatians 5. Galatians 5, if you start to read from verse 16, it tells you that I'm about to talk about two kinds of people. Those who walk in the spirit, and those who walk in the flesh. Or people that are born of the Spirit and put that are born of the flesh. How do we know? Look at verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit. Who can you tell to walk in the spirit? Someone that is already in the spirit. Mm -hmm. 
Walk in the spirit that you do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So he now tells you for the flesh does what? Lusted against the? Meaning the nature called the nature of flesh. How many people know that we have, like I said last week, we have two natures. The kingdom, the nature of sin and the nature of life. So it will not tell you, by the time you get to verse 20 and verse 19, it will tell you that the works of the flesh are manifest. Meaning, this is what the nature of sin produces. Amen. You now start to get him to list in it. Then when he gets to 22, he then tells you what? This is what the nature of the spirit produces. So everyone that is not born again, that first part, Lying, stealing, idolatry. It's part of their nature. Except they go through psychological conditioning. Do you know what that is? Maybe in primary school they are raised and told, you must never lie. But that is there. It's in there. Praise God. And then, you know, it tells you that there is one who is born again. When he's born again, that thing in him that makes him want to sin, that makes sin, his master, is no longer there. He has a new nature. And what does that nature produce? Is there. What does that nature produce? The fruit of the Spirit is? The fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. Love. All the other things you see there are characteristics of that fruit. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Praise God. Then you must say, no, no, it's not true. Because in, look at verse 24. And they that are Christ. How many of us are Christ here? Say, I am, of I am of Christ. What are they that are of Christ? What have they done? They have? It did he say they will or they have? they have? When was the flesh, the nature of sin crucified for the believer? When Christ died. Is it making sense? That's why he said, if you follow the past tense, in English you must follow grammar. He didn't say, they that, they that will, be, they will be crucified. No. He says, they that are of Christ have crucified what? The flesh with the affections and with the so the nature that a man of that is of God has does not have a nature to sin. I didn't say the man does not sin. Where will sin emerge from in that man? It is on is based on his mind. He now has a what mind, and that mind was the same mind he had before he got born a, again. So what would the Bible tell that man to do? The man, you say, do not be conformed to this word, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. Church, amen. Say, I'm born again. I'm born of God. I'm born of the Spirit. Now, let us now go a step further. We are looking at the topic. I just said teaching. We are looking at the topic. Why live a holy life? The first thing we said last week was number one. We live a holy life because we have a new nature. Say we have a new nature. We saw this from Romans 6. Romans 6. We looked at verse 1. And it says, shall we continue in sin as a nature? Because we are now under God's grace. What is the response? God forbid. Why? Then what else did he say? How can we, who are what? Dead with sin. Live in it any longer. So the first reason why a believer, the first reason why a believer is not a sinner is that his nature has changed. What does, see, let me tell you this. It's very important. If you are struggling with habits, this is the power of God I'm sharing with you. Like I always say, God's way of changing people is via his word. It's, it's sometimes very simplistic. It's just that people have a slave and a goat mindset. They think that for something to change their life, it must be automatically, it must be very difficult. They must shout on you. A, a, a spirit must be pursuing you in your dream. You know, say, Akika, God means this thing. No. See, God's word will just tell you simply and you'll move on. God, he'll just tell you, just for example, in Romans 10, verse 23, don't forsake the gathering together of the saints as the manner of some is. That's all. He'll move on. Provoke one another to good works. You, you look at it and say, he's what, he, yeah, 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 yeah. And you will treat that instruction as lightly. 
then you see G, um, Peter get into trouble, but remembers that instruction goes to the saints. You see Judas, he doesn't do it, then commits suicide. Then what do we say? Where is God? God is in his instructions. Amen. God is, and that's why you must understand. That's why David, you say, they give me silver, they give me gold. I choose the word. Be, be, it, uh, and that's why I always tell people that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is a reverential reality. Because nobody, anybody that tells you that God is in your room, is waiting for you in your room, he'll come to you in your vision and come and say, you idiot! I want to answer your prayer. You didn't give. You didn't fast. You didn't read. He doesn't do that. Why? Because the New Testament life is, an, is a life of instructions. And it is instructions for sons. Nobody will pursue you. The people are used to people pursuing them. So when they get to a place where love drives and instructions are given, they are shocked. If it's important, they will pursue us. If it's important, they will say we should pray. No, we have said it. Pray. It's the logistics of God. Yeah. How does God lead his sheep? Instructions. Not backing. He don't, say, God doesn't see me like a goat. That is why two weeks ago we were sharing. He says, I will lead you. I will teach you in the way that you should go. But what did he tell us? Do not be like a mule, a horse, without understanding. Who they have to beat. He must enter trouble. Get into problems. Before he now says, oh, what, did, what does God say about this? Don't be like that. Put God first. Amen. Shout, Amen. Is it making sense? Right. So it, it says to us here, how shall we, I got here to say, the power of God is in this simple statement. How do you live sinful living alone? Continually, say continually. Declare. Reckon it to your mind that you have a new nature. If you have to write it over so that you can see it all the time, the things that are in you, write it there. Love. Joy. Don't say, I know me. We, you don't know you. The Bible says we know no man any longer after the flesh. So, the, let me say something. My friend said it. And it is sober, but it's true. Do you know that if all things are equal, we should take a believer in church, an under believer, and just like, we just say, Rebecca, John, next we come to church for your marriage. It, why? The fact that we cannot do that has many things involved. But the fact is that it shows that it, we are not walking. Because what is within the spirit that they, that they have is identical. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So there's endurance there. There's love. There's patience. There's faithfulness. Praise God. But it says, it says that is the last thing anybody can do. You cannot do that. You can't. Amen. Why? Because, because believers, believers are, are not subjecting themselves to the word as they ought to. And that's why we teach how we teach. So you see that the word of God is your reality. Say my reality. My reality. Say my reality. My reality. So what, how did we get here? We said that you have a nature. And that nature, in that nature is life. In that nature is love. It doesn't matter what anybody says. What do you say? In me is love. What do you say? In me is patience. That very thing that you say is in your generation that you, you don't have in your family. You say, no, I'm different. And it's not motivation. You saw your difference in the word. Amen. Amen. Don't go around with people and say, you know what, this thing happened to me, happened to, it happened to my great-grand, 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 great-grand. When it comes to you, say, it's not a prayer matter, just say me I'm different now. Because my lineage has changed. And I believe it as so. No, nobody needs to encourage you. You must take the word holistically. Nobody needs to give you prep talk. No, 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 no. Did he say that when he died, I died? So the person that could have that issue in their family... Is dead, and I'm born again with a new life, and this life emerges from God. That can never be me. It's not a prayer point. It can never be me. Never, never ever. You even brag about it. Who are you bragging on? The resurrection. Amen. 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 
desire you see it doesn't even matter if at the moment your habits are showing that the thing that, that they are saying looks like that's what you're doing what do you do you lay hold on your nature because nature when your nature's way overwhelms you it affects your behavior that's why when you see in the bible it always says the believer is the house of prayer don't say they can pray i won't pray no you say i'm the house of prayer there is something in me that loves to pray there is something in me that prays i'm a prayer machine you pep up yourself with the word of god. i'm a prayer warrior you can even call yourself a prayer dome call yourself a prayer o2 whatever you want to call yourself prayer stadium call yourself anything but don't say no me you say, when you hear people say i gave myself to maybe they are talking to you as your friend not that they are present on facebook I, I just i just i, I just finished five hours of prayer i say glory to god that's the kind of way we do don't say hi you said what you prayed five me i know i can never pray ten don't talk like that you are reckoning yourself with a dead person that one died that's the point we are we are identifying with dead someone that is dead and you don't want to let go it's a trauma realize that he died go to the grave and say rest in peace move on stop identifying oh you are not patient yes it's true i'm not pa- no the person that is not patient is dead say you seen the ghost yet no he's dead, oh. he's dead when did he die you tell them the day you got born again he died june 4 94. leave it there. they do not ah that's about 25 years of 25 years ago but you are, you are still impatient it doesn't matter he's dead <laughs> because you must start with nature people start with and that is what, what are we teaching here how to change effortlessly people think the way we change everything is backing up people tell me you you see you will never amount to anything continue with the way you're doing continue we are telling you pray you say you don't know, ah, the devil that is waiting for you is in the gym we don't, people don't, so they won't wake up in the middle of the night oh my god they said the devil that is waiting for me is in the gym so that I pray, oh, I will pray, I will pray. If I don't pray, the devil that is waiting for me is in the jail. No! That's not us. Hallelujah. We change via instructions. Praise God. What are we saying? Reckon with your nature. Let me show you again another scripture. That is the power of God. When we say God's word is powerful, is that when it lands on a heart that receives it, it will germinate. That's what we mean by God's word is powerful. Look at Philemon. Philemon 1 6. It's there. Say, I have a new nature. nature. Look at verse 6. That the communication, Philemon 1 6. That the communication of thy faith may become what? It will become what? That word there, effective, is the same word operative, meaning it works. Amen? It becomes effective. How? By the acknowledging. acknowledging. That's what there is. Epignosis. That what acknowledging is. Epi- a- acknowledging. Every what? Church, every what? Every. So you have to do what? Acknowledge every? Good thing. That is where? In, in you, what? So when it says the in you, it really means in Christ. So how will it be effective? Acknowledging. I've got a new nature. I've got a new life. I'm the Holy Ghost temple. I'm the, Holy Ghost temple. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's what you do. You acknowledge. The second reason why we live, we don't live in sin is living in sin opens you up to the devil amen Amen. let me say it in a way that makes sense to you practically how many people have ever been angry in their lives and no 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 we'll get this one and in their anger they've done something that they regret either that is a sin or that is terrible or that is wicked let me see your hands now right good now let us see something we are, what do we say is the second reason for not living in sin? We said the reason we don't live in sin, he opens the door to the devil. Ephesians chapter 4. This is very important. 
If you understand this, someone say, but pastor, I'm seated in Christ. Yeah, uh, but a victory line, let, tell us quickly. Yeah, you have, it's correct. You are seated in Christ in the highest place. The devil is under your feet. But don't go to his living room. How do you go to his living room? By coming to his level. How do you come to his level? He tells us. So that's why you need to, you must understand the wisdom around only living. So it's not about, it's not about uh, maybe God is now maybe angry. God is now keeping malice with you because of what you did. No. We must understand the exact reasons why holiness is wisdom. Look at it for yourself. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. We are going to be reading verse 26. So that it makes sense to you. Verse 26. Be ye. Okay. Ephesians 4 26. Be ye. Angry. Is anger a normal emotion yes. of the human being? Yes. Yeah. Did, it, did, did you see? Never be angry. If you're angry, you're stupid. No. It says, Be ye angry. Because obviously, we still have people like Sister Timmy in this world. We have people like Sister Rebecca. Fola is still alive. So you will be angry. <laughs> and, and praise God. No, no, I'm only trying to tell you human beings still exist. If it was only the Holy Ghost and Jesus walking around, in fact, do you know that the way people are, if Jesus was the only one on earth, they, they would still be offended by him. Yes. I, I always say, with all, with all sense of reason, imagine him being married to Jesus. Say, why didn't you come home? I was preaching all night. Say, why didn't you come home? Say, ah, oh, no, 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 there, uh, there was just a storm. There was just a stomach. How to divide this? Where have you been for the last three days? Oh, they were hungry and had to feed five thousand. It will you, <laughs> you. Jesus have had a divorce. So you have, hey, hey, human beings. Let me just come and save them. Nobody should stay my white. All right. <laughs> hey, human being, you will drag Jesus to divorce court. You will drag him. You want to collect half of eternal life. <laughs> Hey God! Ephesians 4. <laughs> Say all he has and 20% is mine. <laughs> Jesus will look at like, oh ye son of man. Ephesians 4 26. Be ye angry and where is the problem? And where is the problem with anger? No, no, no. He will tell you. See, don't the Bible explain its requirements. Where is the problem with anger? It's there. Do not let the sun, let the sun go down upon your anger. Because like, like they don't have clocks like we have today. So the way they used to tell the time was through the sun. Right? And then God, maybe for some African countries, had to create a um, cock. <laughs> I had to just say that. So you just say, hey, some people might, might pass over your head. But what I mean by that is that. In some areas, they don't have cocks. Uh, they don't have clocks, but they have cock. Mm -hmm. So the cock around five, every time feel five o'clock, that's the way the morning starts. But if you have a lazy clock, uh, cock, <laughs> you're on your own. But that's the way they check their time. So let's continue. He says, be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. The believer is not permitted to be angry for a whole day. Six hours, you are still boiling. He said, you will soon sing. Anger is not the problem. It's prolonged anger. So when you are angry, it's okay. Amen. Amen. You're, it's okay to be angry. But how you deal with the anger is the issue. The devil is there. He knows it. That if you stay... That's why, remember, your mind is powerful. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, what, did you go to a kind of maybe secondary school? Where which, for example... Please let's concentrate... Did you go to a secondary school where which, for example, somebody will just say to you, you are silly. Then you have this other notorious friend that will just say, victory. Did you hear what he said? See, personally, if it was me, I would slap him. You, that I know, silly. How dare he? You were going to pass on the matter. But now there is a hype man. To tell, so you're supposed to say it's okay, you didn't mean it. Uh, you, you know, say, ah, uh -uh. just think about it now. So, all this thing you are doing now for the last one year is silly because you are silly. You say, ah, <laughs> the way you are, you are, you are silly. So, this thing you are very silly. You, say, ah. you know, you're not silly. Slap him. 
Be because you're talking about it, guess what's happening to that person? He's getting more and more and more and more angry. Before you know it, he's shouting. Yeah, everybody thinks that thing ended in secondary school. They don't know that that thing was, they learned it from the devil. The moment you stay angry, if you've been married before, I'm sure my wife will have had to experience this kind of thing. And somebody will just do something mildly. It thought just come to your mind. He did that because he doesn't rate you. You are not special. When last, when, last, when last did he say he loves you? Look at you. Look, with all that you do, you are not honored, respected. Look, uh, um, Kennedy again told us that one of, his revert, one of his pastors, this happened to the wife. And the wife actually lost it in that marriage. Why? Because she accommodated those words. That's what the devil does. So he says, be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Why? Look at verse 27. It's there. Do not give place to the... So what do you do when you go in, in anger or sin? Prolonged anger. You give a place to the devil unnecessarily. And when we say you give a place to the devil, it's not that you just say, ah, you are still angry. Let me tell you. People always think that when we talk about the devil, we get into the realms of maybe someone will just appear in your room. I've, I, since you have been on earth, has anybody just appeared in your room? Say, he, 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 I'm the one they've been talking about, the devil. I'm here to confuse you. No. It's in the thoughts that come to our minds. That's where he's filled in. That's how he was dealing with Jesus. That's why you must be someone that holds your mind via the word of God. That's the same way he deals with Eve. Is the same pattern. He will come with words. What did he do with Jesus? If you are the son of man. Son stone to bread. Same thing with Eve. Did God say? God is saying that you should not do that because you are be like a son. Jesus does not say, ah, leave me, leave me. No, you see, the word says, man shall not live. So, you know the word of God. To, 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 to cut off the fiery darts of condemnation. Because listen, no matter how, no matter the church you go to, the darts of condemnation are steady. That is why he calls it the breastplate. It should ever be there. It should be your reality. Ah, glory to God, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. What shall we say about this thing? Know them. If God be for me, who shall be against me? He spared not his own son. Offer him for us all. How shall he not with him? Offer us all things. Neither death, principalities, powers, nakedness, sword, peril. Nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Nay, you know these things. We are more than conquerors. Know it. Because it's going to come with fiery darts. Praise the Lord. What did we say here? We said here, he says, neither give place to the devil. The devil doesn't just come and say, I'm the devil. No, it's in that deception of thoughts in your heart. That is why prolonged anger will give a place to the devil. Prolonged anger. Amen. Amen. What you meditate on multiplies. Write it down. What you meditate on multiplies. Write this one down as well. The power you have on the earth, outside of the Spirit of God, is the power of your attention. Amen. amen. Church, amen. amen. The power you have outside of the gift of the Spirit given to you is your attention and focus. What you give your attention and focus to, you give your power to. At a base level, nothing is a big deal till you make it a big deal. The devil can inflict you. I'm saying too many things at the same time. But the devil cannot inflict you, even with condemnation, depression, without your permission. You must permit it. You must reckon what he's saying as so. You must say, oh yes, it's true. Devil, you are saying the truth. Praise the Lord. Look at that one. What we're talking about today. One as some number one. Second reason why we don't live in sin is that we give a place to the devil needlessly. Look at James chapter 2 as we start to round off. James chapter 2. Someone cannot just say round off like this. But I wish you stand up. <laughs> hey! Is it <laughs> is like that cock at five o'clock? It must it must crow. Hey! Look at the Look at James 2. James 2. Look at it. James 2. Amen. 
All right, you know what? Because of our time, because I've said now that uh, <laughs> we're about to round it. We're about to round up. James 3, quickly. We can't do James 2 again. Blame victory. Now, we're going to read James 3 and James 4, and then we will close. Let us show you something about contextual reading. So, let's go to James 4 and see the conclusion. James 4, 7. We are going back to James 3. I just want to show you contextual reading. Are you in verse 7? What is the conclusion? It says, Submit yourself, therefore, to resist the and he will so what is the believer to do how do you resist the devil submit to god so that is the end of it right now let us go back to how we started off james 3 look at verse 14 are you there but if you have what bitter envy and where is the strife where is the strife? Listen, don't let anything. See, your focus is your power. Don't focus on, they said I'm not good, I'm not good, I'm not good, I'm not good, I'm not good. Don't focus on the bad things that people do. You're already on the earth. They're already principalities and powers. And it's people that they will use, willingly or unwillingly. Don't get bogged down by people. Don't think that people are the issue. Don't take things so to heart. Look at it because see what it does here. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your heart, it says glory not and lie not against this truth. Look at verse 15. I want you to be here. It says this wisdom descended not from this wisdom descended not from so very important. He is now saying that this is a what? Wisdom. What did he call bitterness? A. Eh? Hey God. What did he call bitterness? A. Eh? What did he call strife? A. Eh? Wisdom. It's a wisdom. He now tells you where it comes from. So when you see people living in bitterness, they are preaching the wisdom of the devil. Strife. Say, I ain't gonna talk to him anymore. He did it. Did it. You laugh it off. It's not that he's not gonna pain you. It's not that you say no. There is a higher kingdom I come from, and I ain't gonna come down to the level of the devil. And there is nothing you're gonna do to make it change my mind. People think it's stupid, but it is because you're operating at another kind of wisdom. Imagine dogs barking and they are laughing at you because you are not barking. Would you feel bad? They are dogs. They can bark. You're not a dog. You don't bark. Act out your nature. Praise God. You don't start saying, mm, you know what? Yeah, 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 yeah. I will deal with him. No, we don't do that. We don't even talk. Listen, we don't even talk rudely. Although I said we're not going to that James too. Why should I? Let me look for a reason for us to go to James too. Okay, let's go. Let's stay in James three. Look at James three. Look at James three. Look at verse eight. It says, "By the tongue no man, but the tongue no man can tame. It's an unruly evil for the man that is not saved." Are you hearing me? It says it's full. I mean, James three, we're in verse eight. What did he say? There's something about the tongue full of deadly poison. Look at verse 9. He says, Dear, we bless we God and even the Father. And we cause men which are made after the image of God. Look at verse 10. Out of the same mouth proceed what? Blessing and causing my brethren. This thing ought not to be so. It doesn't matter how someone winds you up. It doesn't matter if you have a mentor that curses. It doesn't even matter if I come tomorrow and I just look at Sadiq and I start to swear for him. It's not the way. It's not the way. What is he talking about? Wisdom. It's not our wisdom. We don't curse people. When we curse people, we are cursing God. Why? They are made in his own image. So it's hypocrisy for me to be a worshiper of God and cursing man. If I worship God, I've said I cannot. Imagine you praising me. But you are insulting and hating and you kill Caris if you had your way. It's hypocrisy. So we don't do it. It's not our wisdom. Even come up with our makeup. We learned it here. Say about my enemy. Jesus said, bless your enemy. Say, but I heard somebody curse somebody. It doesn't matter who said it. He said these things ought not to be so blessing and curses they don't come he says blessing and cursing how can they come from the same mouth and people wonder how do we partner with the devil james 3 tells you 
Because he's going to tell you, he has already told you, your mouth you, can be used as a deadly poison. Your mouth can be used to do blessing. It didn't say your mouth cannot cause. It just says we don't do it. Are you hearing? Because people just say, how did the devil enter here now? How, how did it happen? No, there is a way. The devil is defeated until man brings him in. Man brought in sin. Man brought in death. Man brings the devil on the scene. He never can come just like that. Look at it. And that's what we're saying. That's the reason we don't live in sin. We ain't bringing him to our party. Look at it. He says here, we go back and then that, to show you the, the context. We are back in James 3, verse 14. We're in verse 15 because of our time. He says, This wisdom descended not from above, but it is what? Church, I want you to be there. Verse 15. This wisdom is what? Earthly, it's of this earth. Say, I'm born in this world, but I'm not born of this world. So he says, This wisdom is earthly. This wisdom of strife and bitterness is sensual, it follows after your feelings. What else is this wisdom? It is what? Church, it is what? So the lust of the flesh, the anger, bitterness, malice, what are they? He says, they, it, At the end of the day, it's a wisdom that is devilish so imagine the believer before then you have been told blessing and cursing doesn't come out of the same mouth then you will see believers open their mouth i curse you from this day what have you done you have partnered with the devil are you hearing because what have you done you have operated a wisdom that is not of your kingdom amen because i'm saying i don't know why the devil just came in oh, look he now says Look at it. it. When in verse 15, it tells you that this wisdom is devilish. By this time, you should make up your mind that nothing in this world will ever make you have any in that strife, bitterness, envy, all of those kind of things is never worth it anymore. Because an association with that wisdom is an association with the devil. So you've got a party, it's going to be there. Because why? You've chosen strife. That's why Paul will tell the Corinthian church, what's wrong with you? Your children. There is strife and envy amongst you. You are behaving like men, men. That's why it's not that God is up there saying, Oh my god, I'm angry, I'm keeping malice. How would they do that? No, it's because of the effect of sin on man. Are you hearing? Look at it. It now says in verse 16, very humbly. Okay, we'll close down. For where envy. Are you there? Verse 16. Don't say I, I don't know where, I don't know how. This is how it happens. For where envy. Don't let the devil take advantage of you. Don't. You don't have to. You don't have to. You know, I remember a story. Well, the person is my daughter, so I can share it. This lady got pregnant. By a miracle, got pregnant. And in that season, her and her husband got into fights. And as they got into fights, the master had to release words. Talking all manner of things and obviously as a woman replicating talking about what the booty baby is are you sure the baby is for me the baby came out with a problem died a few days after i can say it now because they have a child now we prayed again and now okay but they knew better and i ran down to the hospital because she was <laughs> she said my, my my pastor says the god kind of mankind we are not buried until, until um, pastor is here. I ran down with my associate. Say, let's go there. They were making too much noise in the car and all those kind of things. I said, we are going to the hospital. Right? To go and see somebody. They were still talking. Like, no man, no man. No. Pastor Dyer will just lay hands and there will be a miracle here. I just said, that baby will be that just, just give back to has died. We are going to raise the baby up. <laughs> all my associates that were, they were they're talking and hey, you know what? Just, I just saw that, and I, I did purposely because I don't want them calm as I'm going. They were all serious now. I was laughing in my mind. They, they, you're not seeing them. I'll just look at the side mirror. Uh, yeah, I got you where I want you. Before you were just talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, you come and drive, oh. And we got there. I, I thought the baby would stand up. And I got there. I looked at the nurses. Send everybody out. You know, in Hong Kong, they're like, come here, but I said, give me, give me 10 minutes. I just want to wake this child up. We can go by business. 
the 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 the, 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 the mother was like the mother didn't share the tears. Oh, until Pastor Dyer comes here, you know, dead. We don't do dead in our church. <coughs> she, she said, wait, 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 wait. On the phone, what they were telling me, wait, no, 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 don't come, don't declare any, don't put any table. Uh, dead. We don't die in our own place. So. <coughs> we drove down there from Glasgow to Ma- uh, to Newcastle. I got there. I said, everybody, live here. I did like Jesus. Live here, live here, live here, live here. I just need only me and my house seats. Put them in my pocket. Father, thank you. Ah, nothing. Father, thank you. You now became panic. Father, thank you. Up, 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 up. What's going on here? I was confused. Hi. And they had not told me any of the stories. I didn't know anything. I said, no, this thing works every day now. Ah, this dead body. I've, I was thinking in my mind, nurses are coming back to say, hey, they all you are you fanatics. I said, hey, I was now saying, like, baby, baby, baby. Hey God, baby! I was like, Hey God! When the people, my my associates saw me, that is, like, ah, my pastor is panicking. I said, There's fear. That was when I saw a tear drop from the woman. I say, I said, Okay, no problem. I said, It's fine. Prepare for the burial. I went back into the car. I was thinking. I drove back home. I went back to the house. What could it be? How could it be that I could not do something about this thing? How? I'm telling you this story because I'm going somewhere. Somebody just came to the office. Pastor, I've got five I just, I was angry. I just, ouch! I said, Pastor, what happened? I said, wait. She was a doctor. She's gone. I mean, I use names in my testimony because it's not free. She's gone. I said, I'm not, I'm not in the mood. I'm dealing with something in my brain. I don't have time. Five bro- Ouch! I said, Pastor, it's gone because she was a doctor. Pastor, doctor, for look at. And she said, Pastor, is here. He's gone. He's gone. I didn't want to tell God so much. Father, we give you praise. It's okay. Just go. I was praying, God, what could it be? God didn't say anything. Then he said, call the family, call the woman, and ask what has been happening in the last six months. I called her. What have you been doing? She said, nothing, but just that. I, I don't know why I said it. Have you been fighting? Because I've been praying. So I knew my, have you been fighting? Have you been quarreling? Have you been speaking for some words? Say, yeah, we've been fighting for the last six months. We've been quarreling. He said this and this and broke and said this and this to me. And I just heard it quickly. You've got your answer. The words that they said. Partnering with the evil one to do damage that could not even be rescued at the time. Maybe if I'd known better, maybe there was something I could do to stop it, but we could not stop it. But what I'm trying to even say to you now is that is how they yielded to the devil wherever there is bitterness envy malice strife. he says there is confusion verse 16 and every evil work but we are smarter we are smarter we don't we don't it's not that we are fools we are actually smarter when we say we don't keep malice we sit under pressure it's not because we don't know that she might offend again it's because we know we are smarter no, we don't do those things. We don't relegate ourselves to the realm where which we fellowship with the wisdom of the devil. It's not about God. It's about the wisdom I operate on the earth. Because I'm the God kind of mankind. The spirit is already here. But I can leave that esteemed position I'm in and start to walk like a mere man. I give place to malice. The devil helped me logicalize it. Don't talk to your husband for days. No, that's why Peter will say, don't do it. He says, do you not know when you're arguing with your brother and sister or your wife, your prayers are hindered, don't you get it? Not because of anything. Because you are fighting, you will not be in the stratosphere to pray. So there is hindrance of prayer. Where we told you would pray and things will happen. Now you are looking at each other with anger. I would, like I should break her head. Oh, he's got you. Rise upon your feet. Because we are smarter. We are smarter. We are smarter. We are smarter. Listen, the devil does not have power. He operates every wisdom. And the Bible tells us this wisdom. So we can avoid it. Lift up your hands and give God praise. For we know better. We do better. The devil gets up, caught up in many things of this world. It fills our hearts that we cannot hear God perceive him. But very clearly we hear the evil one and his way. Because we put his system, we put his wisdom in our hearts. So James will say, resist the 
the devil. He will flee from you. It's not that saying I resist. It's by saying, oh, I don't walk in the wisdom of this world. I don't walk in the wisdom that is devilish. I don't walk in the wisdom that is sensual. I walk in the face of God. I walk in the revelation of God. I walk in the wisdom, in the mind, in the way of God, sister. They can put us and we've got the mind of Christ, the wisdom of Christ, the philosophy of Christ, the way of Christ. We know better. We know better. We know better. So we don't give in. We yield ourselves to righteousness because we are someone of righteousness. Give all the praise. We close in this service with these words, this song. I'm no longer a slave. But if you want to sing that for us as we close, I'm a child of God. Go to somebody and hold them and sing.